Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. Few days ago, I made a video on the QSBI peripheral, where we interfaced the external flash, and using the memory map mode, the memory was seen as the internal memory. Similarly, today we will interface the external RAM with the help of the FMC peripheral. In today's video, we will just do the connection part for the external SD RAM. We will also use mem copy functions, which will prove that the RAM is being treated as the internal RAM. Later in the next video, I will show a very important use of it, where we will use this SD RAM to store the LCD frame buffer into it. So let's start the today's video. During the research, I have found out that basically all the SDM32 microcontrollers, which come preloaded with the SD RAM, use this, MT48L from the Micron. So this tutorial will be focused on this SD RAM only. You can see the schematic of the board I am using, and it have the same memory. Let's start the Cube IDE, and set up our project. I am using STM32 F750 Discovery Board. Give some name to this project, and click Finish. First things first, let's set up the clock. I am using external crystal for the clock. I am running the system at maximum possible, 216 MHz clock. If you are using Cortex M7, enable the cache. Let's take a look at the datasheet for the SD RAM. Here you can see, there are three variants available, and these are their respective speeds. I have the variant 6A, and this one runs at 167 MHz clock. This is why I have configured the clock to the maximum, so that we achieve this speed. This is the connection for the SD RAM, and you can see it uses the FMC peripheral. We will need this connection diagram during the setup. Let's see the SD RAM peripheral. Here you can see we have SD RAM 1 and SD RAM 2. This depends on what bank is being used for the SD RAM in the controller. For this particular board, the bank 1 is being used for the SD RAM, so I am configuring the SD RAM 1. Let's enable the clock and the chip. You can see here, I don't have option to select the another one, and this is because the SD RAM is connected to the bank 1. If you check the reference manual, the SD RAM controller, here you can see the option 0 is for enabling the clock and chip for the SD RAM bank 1. In the internal bank number, we will use the four banks. This SD RAM have four banks of 32 megabits each, and we will use all of them. The address will be 12 bits, and the data will be 16 bits. This part you can confirm in the schematics. Here we have the 16 data pins, and here are the 12 address pins. Next are the pins. Make sure the pins are correct, as I have mentioned this, CubeMX sometimes configures the wrong pins. So do cross check them with the schematics. Also the maximum speed should be set to very high for all the pins. 
Now we will configure the parameters. Number of column address bits must be 8. You can see it here, the column addressing is 8 bits, from 0 to 7. The rest of the setup should be same for all the SD RAMs. Keep the CAS latency to 3 clock cycles. Common clock to 2 cycles. Enable the burst read, and leave the read pipe delay to 0 cycles. Configure the rest of the options as shown. 2747322 This is it for the setup. Click save to generate the project. Now the first thing we will do is, copy these SDRAM library files into the project. Include the file we just copied into the project. Now go to the FMC initialization function, and here in the user code section, we will initialize the SDRAM module separately. You can get this code from the link in the description. Here we need to make few changes. For example, what bank are we initializing? For me, it's bank 1, so I am leaving it to default. Then the CAS latency. If you remember, I have used the latency of 3, so I am changing this. All right now we will test the SD RAM. Let's start by creating the write and read buffers. Let's include the string.h for the mem copy functions. We also need to define the address for the SD RAM. This address can vary, depending on the microcontroller. We can find it in the reference manual. Let's check the FMC memory distribution. Depending on if we are using the bank 1 or bank 2, we have the different base address for the SD RAM. Since I am using bank 1, the start address will be 0 cross C million. We will write the main function now. First we will copy the data into the SD RAM. And then we will read the data from this SD RAM. Let's build and debug this. Add the SD RAM address to the memory viewer. I am putting a breakpoint here in the initialization function. As soon as we step over this function, the data in the SD RAM starts showing in the memory viewer. And now we will copy the data into the memory. Here you see the data gets copied into the SD RAM. And now if we copy the data from this location into our buffer, we get the same that we copied. So we were able to use the mem copy function to read and write the data to the SD RAM. This means that the external SD RAM was seen as the internal memory to the microcontroller. In the next video, when I will cover the LTDC peripheral, I will make use of this SD RAM to store the frame buffer for the display. This is it for the video. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, 
and have a nice day ahead.